Okay, we're going to try something together that works well for up to four players. Um, so two, three, or four players would be great. Now, I'm the only one here, and so for me to, to play the role of, of four players, I think would be slightly overwhelming. Uh, so I think we'll go ahead and just do it for two, if that's okay. Okay, I've shuffled the deck uh, three or four times now. Um, so we need to deal out four hands of five cards each, okay? And so that means we need a total of 20 cards. And so what I thought we would do to just get a really good random collection of cards for this is go ahead and use something called the Klondike Shuffle, which is a wonderful way to randomize cards in a deck of cards. So what you do is you take the top and bottom off as one and set them down. And so since these are pairs, um, I think we just need 10 pairs to give us 20 cards all together. So we have one, two pairs, uh, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine and ten. So if I haven't made a mistake, uh, we should have 20 cards. If I have made a mistake, we'll discover that and have more cards than we need. And so we'll just toss out the extras, I guess. Um, so, uh, so we have this packet of 20 cards. And I really wish you were here because I would like to randomize this further just so that you feel comfortable with, you know, th this whole situation here. And and um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to deal out the cards until the spectator or you says stop. Okay, now I'm going to have to go ahead and just kind of guess when you might say that. Uh, but if you were here, you genuinely could say stop and I would go on to the next pile. You could say stop and I would go on to the next pile just as I'm doing. In fact, this shuffle has kind of a cool name. It's called the first shall be last and the last shall be first because you kind of deal them out in this order and then you stack them in opposite order. Uh, why don't we do one more of those just to kind of really mix these cards. So tell me when to stop. Stop. Okay. Stop there. Okay. S stop there. And there as well. Stop. Okay. Okay. First shall be last and the last shall be first. Okay. Um, well, I think, should we mix a little bit more maybe? Well, why don't we do one more Klondike? Okay, so that's that top and bottom one. This is actually a fun one to perform and watch. So if you haven't used it before, um, it really is a fun little shuffle. And it's bringing the top and bottom together and it genuinely is mixing the cards in a way that no other shuffle does actually. Okay, well, I, I think we've mixed this card to the point where the cards are starting to get warm just from using them so much. So I'm going to go ahead and just deal out four piles of five cards each. And then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to allow you to, uh, well, together we're going to decide on who gets which pile. Um, and that's because I want both of us sounding in on all of this. I want us to be kind of equal partners in this with no one having some kind of advantage. Um, so we'll, look, we'll go ahead and have you um, get your pile first. And uh, to involve me, we'll, the way we'll do it is, uh, why don't you go ahead and put your finger on two of the piles and I'll discard one of them, okay? So maybe you put your fingers here. And so I'll go ahead and get rid of maybe this one here, okay? And then I'll put my finger on two piles, maybe these two, and then you can choose which one to discard. Maybe you get rid of that one. That's fine. Let me not take these off out of camera because we need them in a minute. <laughs> and then you would put your fingers here and then I would discard um, one as well. So maybe I discard this one right here. And so this would be your pile, your special pile. So I'll set it up here. So you we can keep an eye on it there, okay? Now, um, I get the dregs here, I suppose. So we have these three piles, okay? And so I'll go ahead and, uh, let's see, maybe I'll put my fingers on these two. So you're free to discard either. You want to discard that one, okay? 
and then there's only two piles left so you would put your fingers right here and maybe I'll discard this one right there okay so that would give me this pile as mine okay and then these two um, they could have been used for other players but we're going to assume there's just two of us here so we can actually discard those completely okay well let's see how we did let's let's see what kind of hand each of us got um, ooh, that's, uh, well, it's not too, well, I guess you got a pair, right? You got two threes, so you kind of got something there, but, um, but I think I got a slightly better hand. In fact, I think I actually got it, I think they call it an unbeatable hand, I believe. It's an unbeatable hand. Uh, no one can beat this hand, actually. It's a royal flush is what it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at um, what's happening here and how you can perform the same effect. And you truly can have up to four players. Um, so what you need is you need a royal flush at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so that's kind of where the whole thing starts. Um, now, if you're comfortable with something called retaining the bottom stock, um, relative to the riffle shuffle, uh, that's that's what I did. I did a number of shuffles, riffle shuffles, where um, I essentially let. Let me just slow down here. So I let at least five cards on the left fall before I mix in the ones on the right. Okay. So what that means is it just leaves the bottom five cards alone. Now that was, of course, obviously <laughs> done there. <laughs> now a uh, one. One little trick to help you with this is the thing to do is break off more than half the cards into your left hand, the, the pile that you hope to retain the bottom cards, and then just let them fall first. You know, you need, about, you need five or more of them to fall first, and then you're free to kind of mix the other ones in. And so it will help to, um, if you have a bigger group of cards here, it will actually help you in that process. So if you look here, I've retained the uh, royal flush at the bottom of the deck. Now there are other ways to mix uh, casually so that you know the spectator feels like, oh, okay, the cards are not in any particular order. And so whatever method you've come up with that you're comfortable with, um, yeah, I mean you can even do something as simple as this. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing. And all I have to do is I have to make sure that. The five bottom cards here eventually go on the bottom. But see, you're free to mix all the other cards as much as you want, right? You just mix these forever, really. But you just have to make sure that you don't disturb the bottom five. That's, that's the key, okay? So you can mix that in a way, I think, that would convince most people that the cards are beyond the knowledge of anybody, really. Okay, very good. So, um, so we will need 20 cards for this because we'll be dealing out four hands of five cards. And so a fun way actually to deal out uh, cards is to use the Klondike Shuffle. Now it is true that it's being used uh, for functional purposes as well. It's not just selecting 20 cards, but it's actually helping to put cards where they need to be for all of this to work. So we can actually just count pairs. So that was one pair, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pairs. So ten times two is twenty. So there we go. We have twenty uh, cards. Um, at this point, um, you can you can do any mixing that's equivalent to. Um, either a packet reversal or um, preserves the order of the cards as they are, okay? So the one I used is a, a, a very powerful one. It's called the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So how this works is you truly just start dealing the cards out until the spectator says stop and then you go to the next pile and they say stop, okay. Say stop again, that's fine. Stop there. Okay, very good. And it's called first shall be last and last shall be first because the first card 
chords dealt are over here, and the last ones are over here. So the first shall be last, and the last, so what you do is you just pick them up in opposite order. Last shall be first. Now, believe it or not, what that does is it reverses the order of all of the cards. And so what that means then is the cards that were on the top, or on the bottom, or on the top, and the cards on the top are, on the, are now on the bottom. So it reverses their order. Well, if you reverse the order of the cards twice, then you get back to the original order. So you just do a second one. So you just deal them out until the spectator says stop. Okay, and it truly is a free choice. Okay, okay, there you go. And then first shall be last, the last shall be first. Okay, so if we do two reversings of the packet, it gets back to where it was. Um, but boy, does it give the illusion of mixing those cards um, quite thoroughly, actually. And then um, we, we do need to Klondike shuffle the packet one more time. It's, it's not just for the ostensible reason of mixing the cards. Uh, we do need to perform one more uh, Klondike shuffle. Okay, and really quickly, let me just explain, because we're supposed to keep this kind of simple in the simple math card magic um, <laughs> series. Um, when we had the, um, when we started with the royal flush at the bottom, and we performed that first Klondike shuffle to get our 20 cards. Now, what, and you'll, you can check this for yourself. What happens is, the Klondike Shuffle will insert one card, like one random card, between each of our special cards in our Royal Flush. So after that first Klondike Shuffle, you'll have, at the very bottom, you'll have um, you know, one of the cards from our Royal Flush and then one in different card, and then one of the cards in our Royal Flush, and, and, and it will repeat in that pattern. It, essentially, one um, random card gets inserted between each of our five special cards. Well, when you do a second Klondike Shuffle, now we'll have three random cards that are now inserted between our special cards. So you can get a three here. And then, see, where's the next one? Queen. So we get these three that are between the Ten of Hearts and the Queen of Hearts and so forth. And then between the Queen and the king, you see three cards, okay? So if you think about that, so if we, if our special, you know, our royal flush cards have three cards between them, when we go ahead and deal into four piles, it's going to put those royal flush cards in the same pile, okay? So that's something you can kind of experiment with. In fact, that's where we're going to go next, right? We're going to go ahead and deal out into four piles. Okay. And think about it. I, I just showed you that the bottom card is one of our royal flush cards. And so that the bottom, the last card that we deal is from the bottom of the little packet. Okay. So we know that our royal flush is sitting over here it's going to be the last pile. That's where it'll be found, okay? So there you go. So I'll just put this over here, okay? And maybe just to quickly mention something that I just noticed <laughs> that I uh, did a little differently than um, what I did originally and what I've written up. Um, when I did that first shall be last and last shall be first, um, I did it right after we got our 20 cards. So essentially, I kind of did it in here. Now it ends up, it won't matter where you do it actually, because if you do two of these shuffles, you know, where the spectator is telling you when to stop dealing into piles, it's the same as leaving the cards alone. It won't change anything. So in, in just in a, a minute ago, I actually performed those right in here, and then we did one more right, Klondike Shuffle. So I just wanted to be intellectually honest about that change. I, I didn't mean to, to move where I did it, but it ends up it doesn't matter where you do it. Um, okay, so the, the, the thing to remember is um, their 
uh, the special pile, the royal flush is right here, and we want that one, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called the magician's force. So how this works is if you have an even number of options or choices here, piles, you have this spectator go first. Doing so guarantees that you can force them to take one, you know, one of the piles that you want them to take. If there's only three piles, then you go first as the performer and you are guaranteed to get the pile that you want secretly. Okay, so let's kind of step through that. So right now you have to imagine the spectator, right? Spectator on the other side. And I ask them to uh, put their fingers on uh, two piles. So let's go ahead and um, what I'm going to do is, this is, you can choose, I, I don't want them to end up with this one. That's the key, right? Uh, but I can force them to end up taking any one of these four. Okay, so just so that we can kind of keep track of it, in my mind I'm thinking, okay, I want them to take this one, let's say. Okay, ends up not mattering which of the three. I just don't want them to have that one. Okay, so I'll have that card face up just to remind us, okay, that's the one I'm going to guarantee that they have to have. Okay, so they're going to put their finger on two piles. And it really can be any of these piles. Maybe they put their fingers here. So I go ahead and discard this one. Okay, there. There we go. Maybe I won't move it off entirely. Okay. Um, now it's my turn to put my fingers, right, on two of them. Well, I want them to have this one, so I put my fingers here. Maybe they discard this one. Well, look at what happens. It's their turn to put their fingers on two piles. I get to choose which one to throw out. Well, I'm going to choose this one, right, if I'm secretly wanting them to take that one. And so that guarantees that they get this one. And more specifically, it guarantees that they don't get the special one over here, the royal flesh pile. Okay, and then all you do is you just move the piles up again, like this. And now it's my turn. It's easy to justify that. You had them go first. It seems like a very fair thing to do. And now it's my turn. Okay, now I want to, I want to protect, I, I want this one to survive. I, I want that pile for myself. So I certainly would put my fingers over here, right? Because I'm happy if they discard either one of these. I don't want them anyway. So maybe they, they say, okay, we'll take this one away. Very good. Okay, that one's gone. And then they would put their fingers right here. And I'm free to discard one of these, either one. So I will go ahead and discard this one, okay? And that leaves me with the very pile that I wanted at the very, very beginning, okay? Um, because of the mixing that I did, I honestly won't know what they have here, what kind of hand they have. Is it a good one or a bad one? I'll have no idea. I just know I have a royal flush, right? That's, that's what I know, which can't be beaten. It can be tied, but it can't be beaten. Um, so you can go ahead and reveal theirs. The probability that they have a royal flush is uh, incredibly small, especially since these cards have already been taken to constitute a royal flush. Okay, so what did they get? Oh, they got two pairs. Okay, not, not too bad. They got a, a pair of threes and a pair of eights. Not too bad. But you are guaranteed, as you saw in the original performance, to finish with a royal flush every time, okay? If you follow the steps here. Okay, so anyway, that is the performance. There's a lot of um, elements to it that are meant to be kind of educational. I'm hoping that it's a good thing that we talked about the magician's force uh, because you'll recognize it. Even if you don't use it yourself, you'll recognize where, when people are kind of using it on you and it's giving the illusion of, of, um, of free will and truly deciding which packet they get. And it's an illusion. It's not really true. Um, the magician 
in the way that I've shown you here, they can guarantee that you choose a certain one. So thanks for watching.